Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our Sunnah followers hadith class. And we are continuing with the hadith from the book entitled 55 Hadith on Islamic Behavior and Discipline. And today we're on hadith number 32. Yesterday, 31 spoke about remembering death, but in a different way. To be honest, 31 was about being a traveler and being a stranger in this world. This hadith is different. This hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. He says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, increase yourself in remembering the destroyer of pleasure. This is a hadith that you guys hear me quote a lot. The prophet said, never forget the destroyer of pleasure. And what is the destroyer of life's pleasures? That is death. So the prophet is outright telling us in this hadith that we should never forget that death can come at any moment. Death can come at any second. Okay, we should always be mindful of it. And since death is inescapable. We should always be on, uh, on, be prepared for it. And how do we prepare for death? By trying to accumulate as many good deeds that will be in our favor as possible. You know, like we were saying yesterday, a lot of people put emphasis on college degrees and all of that. Your college degrees are not going to help you when after death comes. The only thing that's going to help you are the good things you did for others. So we want to try to prepare for death by doing as many good deeds as we can. And the longer or the more often we remember death, the less likely we will be to fall into sin. People who sin often are people who think that they'll live forever. I know a lot of people that are Muslim, but they don't practice the deen. And I say to them, why aren't you practicing a religion? And they'll tell me, oh, I'm young. You know, I'm going to practice when I get a little older. I just want to have my fun right now. I'm still young. But when I get older, I'm going to take it more seriously and start praying and start hijabbing and all of that. These are people that think they'll live forever. How do you know that you will live long enough to see what you consider old age? In Islam, anyone over the age of 32 is old. And most of these people are in their 30s and 40s. They're way over 32. So again, this is a wonderful hadith for us to ponder, you know, never forget the destroyer of life's pleasure. And what is the destroyer of life's pleasures? Death. How does this hadith impact you? Who would like to comment? Go ahead. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. That is, this is a very good hadith. And this is something that I keep, I keep in mind all the time. Not just because death has been a big part of my family, a big part of my life, but now, as a Muslim, I think of it even more because each day I know no day is promised to me. And I am a traveler on this in life, like the Prophet وسلم, is temporary. This life is so temporary. And uh, I feel like I'm just stopping at a watering hole, just getting a sip of water so I can continue the journey. And sometimes I forget, but I try to make myself remember all the time. I choose to remember that this life, what goes on in this life 
is not as important as what's going to be in the next life. And then I try to, to calculate as many good deeds as I can. Because I know that Allah wa ta'ala is the all hearing, all seeing. That he knows what I'm doing, knows what I'm feeling. And if there's some way that I can make someone else's life a little a little easier, inshallah, I'll do it. I'll do it for the pleasure of Allah. That's all. Thank you for sharing that, Sister Sabrine. Yes, go ahead, Sister Mona. Um, this hadith, like, you know, it hits for me because, like, as you were saying, like, a lot of young people have the mentality of, you know, I'll just get it together when I'm older. I'll just do this when I'm older. And it reminds me, like, like a question I was, like, I, not a question, but, like, the imam at our mosque like you know he asked our youth like you know the angel he told our youth like the angel of death isn't gonna wait for you to get your life in order to take your soul and like, it can happen at any given moment so you might as well just like you know work to be better right now because if you die like that's it and like you and then you have to answer the question of like, you know, what made you so careless about your Lord and your religion? And nothing is going to be a good enough excuse for you to be pardoned. Nothing. So that's something I ponder every single day. Every time, like, you know, I want to be like, oh, like, I'll just like pray this. I'll just pray this after I go here and here. But like, if I step out of my house, I might pass away. So might as well pray before I leave my house or I might as well, you know, come into this Zoom room instead of, um, you know, just sitting down and watching TV and just trying to do things that keep me in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthen my iman. Because the more I do that, the more, like, the easier everything else is for me. And I'm not going to have that mentality of, you know, I'm young, I can live my life. And I'm actually going to be better and earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love instead. Exactly, guys. We have to try to make the most of our time here on earth because we don't know when that clock will stop ticking for us. Go ahead, Sister Lucy. To me, to me, this is our practice round, our stomping ground, our our, our time before we get to to the hereafter this is our training this is you learning all the steps that you need to learn to worship Allah to do all the things he asks you to do and then you have that mentality of the hereafter is 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 your final destination and this is where you get yourself groomed and prepped for the hereafter and if you're not groomed and prepped for the hereafter, you know where you're going. Exactly, guys. And that's what this world is. This world is our stepping, the stepping uh, st uh, ground to the hereafter. You know, the choices that we make in this world determine what our fate or outcome will be when we're in that grave. Either you're going to be in the hellfire, which 90 uh, a 99% of us are going to be in that hellfire, uh, being punished for some sins that we died upon. You know, only 1% of make it to that paradise as a green bird, you know, so we need to re be more mindful as to how, you know, death, you know, can come and destroy all the pleasures, all the things that we find pleasurable now, they won't be of no benefit to us when we're in that grave. All right, I wanna thank everybody for joining and participating in this session. Uh, please make sure you guys follow the events on the uh, Suna Followers Facebook page. Tomorrow we have a lot of lectures. We have Dr. Dr. Um, don't forget we have Dr. Dramali. The morning at CAR will be uh, at 6.30 a.m. Please join us in the Zoom room. And also we have Dr. Asim. Dr. Asim will be continuing with uh, the names of Allah. Uh, make sure you guys come prepared tomorrow with three names of Allah. 
to give the meaning of at 5 p.m. I mean, at 6 p.m. We changed his time to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, Supana Kalahumawa Bihamdika Ashadwan Laila Haila Enta Stakti Rukawa Tubwe Lake. 